Yeah, okay. So mainly what we're going to do is kind of like in that one 40-minute PID video that uh, Luke and I did a really long time ago. Um, we're just going to sit down in like one go and we'll try and cover some of the basics. Um, and yeah, just sort of do it all from the basics. So one of the first things um, is you got to GitHub. You'll see I have made a TVC sim. It's a better version of the old PID one. Um, and we're going to kind of use this to so basically the entire time um, that I made the PID one. I was like, oh, this is kind of bad. I should probably redo it at some point. I eventually got around to redoing it at this point. Um, and one of the main motivations behind doing this was to simplify um, a lot of that code. So I basically took the MATLAB that Luke and I use, like our MATLAB tuning script, and I tried my best to convert it into Python in a way that is going to be very accessible um, and easy to understand. So this is like the main file of it. Um, and I tried my best to just really simply break it down so that there's like a physics section. This is where we plot the stuff. And then we have the compute, the control stuff. Um, and it's super simple if I run it. It will hopefully work. Maybe. Building. I also hate the new Sublime update. Oh, there we go. It worked, but it didn't. Oh, it did show that guy, but it didn't. My screen. Hold up. There we go. So you can see it's got TVC physics. Um, and then it plots the stuff. So this is like exactly how Luke and I do our tuning stuff, just we do it all in MATLAB. Um, just because MATLAB already has all of the built in stuff ready for it. But um, we might use this um, in, throughout the stream as like a way to sort of visualize some of the physics that are happening. Um, and then maybe eventually um, actually doing like some LQR control and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, so basically like this is very similar to how our Simulink and MATLAB stuff works. Um, so I broke it down into like there's a physics section, which has our three degree of freedom physics. You know, we got our axes and all that. There's a PID controller, just like last time. I just cleaned up the table a lot and then a graphics handler. Just like simplify it all and make it all nice and clean so that people can understand it and so that it isn't one mess like the code and the other PID stuff. So with that said, we talked a lot about PID, but you guys are all here for that sweet, sweet state space stuff. And of course, like everything in life, state space starts with a free body diagram. Do you need pen and paper? You can have pen and paper if you want. Um, but I wish I, I wish I was able to like show you guys pen and paper. If I had like a overhead camera or something, um, that would be good. Um, I mean, you shouldn't need to write anything down because hopefully it's all recorded if you're doing a good job recording it. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay. I'm gonna try my best to keep my handwriting and paint good, but we'll see how that goes. Um, my forehead is hollow. Is that okay? I don't think that's okay, but I wouldn't know. Okie dokie. So let's uh let's take a look at our motivation for actually using state space, um, or for using state space to be specific, right? So if we have our PID, right? So let's say we have our plant. Or, in other words, our physics. In control engineering, it's often called the plant. I don't know why. I thought that was for like botany or something, but no. Um, they love their plants. Oh, I ran out of space already. This is kind of sad. That's okay. Wow. So we have a set point, right, that gets summed. This gives us an error signal. And this goes into our PID controller. That looks, does this look familiar to everyone? I'm going to take that as a yes. Beautiful, right? So this is our, this is our classic PID controller, right? We've got a closed loop feedback. We've got some physics. We have a system. And then we feedback. We have a reference that we want. Um, and then we have a PID controller. 
But of course, as I'm sure quite a few of you know by now, the biggest issue with this is that it's single input, single output. So in the case of a rocket, we have our rocket angle. Rocket angle. Listen here, Carmelic, or sorry, stinky, smelly freshman. Um, you don't get that if you get here. This is a high quality street. Oh, I messed it up a little bit. There we go. That's pretty good. That looks like a summoning block. You can't tell me it doesn't. All right. So we have our rocket angle, right? The issue with the PID is that it can only deal with one, um, one control input, right? The PID can only look at one thing, and it observes. It observes one thing, which is our error signal from our reference based on the current state, the current rocket angle. And that's the output. Can I ask questions on the recording? I don't know what that means. Um, but if anyone does have a question to ask on stream that is more, that is very lengthy, um, you cannot ruin the video. But you can like raise your hand. Um, but for the most part, we'll try to keep questions in chat to keep my sanity. All right. So yeah, so you'll recognize this from the PID video, right? This is our PID loop. This is how it computes. But the issue, right, is that our rocket exists with more than just one state. There is more to a rocket than just its angle. I know some people want to simplify it and reduce it down to just its angle. But our rocket has got more dimensions. It's got more character than just angle. So, this is our motivation for having state space, for having multiple inputs and potentially multiple outputs. Um, yeah. So, we'll go ahead and get into sort of uh, the like where to start state space. <laughs> state space. Is that Ohio or something? Um, okay. <laughs> So we'll do it so very from the ground up. Um, so we'll start with our free body diagram of our rocket. So let's say that we have a rocket. I think that's a pretty good rocket, right? We'll give it a little, we'll give it a no scone maybe. Um, so here's our rocket. And as we know, physics act on this rocket. So we have it as a free body. Um, there's going to be a thrust force that pushes it up. There'll be a drag force that stabilizes this. And because we live in the real world, we're going to have disturbances that act all on the rocket. Um, if it has fins, because it's not a cool TVC rocket, um, then we also have aerostabilizing forces that will rotate it about its center of mass. But in our specific case, we'll talk about C rocket. Actually, I'll just draw him as a little square. So here's our TBC rocket, and he can move. Well, if we're looking at the full six degrees of freedom rocket, then we would look at it in three dimensions, right? So we'd have, you know, our rocket like this, and it can move left and right in this direction, left and right, or up and down in that direction, up and down here, and then it can also rotate around all three of these axes. But the nice thing about TVC rockets is that we can simplify them. And we can simplify this down to two linearly independent axes, um, i.e. these two axes, because these two that we care about for our TVC, these are the two that we can control with our TVC. Um, and we can, for the most part, ignore the roll axis, um, you know, like assuming we have either a reaction wheel to deal with it or that we have um, a robust enough method of orientation resolution that it doesn't become an issue. So what we will do is if you imagine you stand here and we are to look at the rocket with our eyes, with your eyes, and your eyebrows, and you're looking at the rocket, 
down one of these axes, then we can simplify everything. So what we will have is essentially these axes of freedom. So we'll have a rotation, which I will call theta. We will have a translation, which we will call z. And then we have upwards x. And then what we have is we have derivatives and second derivatives of each of these states. Um, but we can get to that um, later for now. Let's just go about deriving each of these and how they get um, resolved. So let's deal with just theta. So let's recreate essentially our PID loop, um, but obviously with just physics, right? So just like how force equals oof, force equals mass times acceleration, when we're dealing with rotation, um, it is <laughs> thank you for the insight drawing. <laughs> That's amazing. So just like how we have force equals mass times acceleration, we also have torque. Make my tau a little bit better. Torque equals angular acceleration times inertia. And these two are very similar. Newton was a very smart guy, probably. Couldn't say for sure. So if we're dealing with just a rotation, this is going to be our second derivative of our theta state, right? All of this stuff is our rotation stuff. So this is the force that acts on this, which causes a rate of change of our angle. Um, and then that, of course, over time, causes a change to our actual. Is everyone happy with that? Content with these physics so far? Take that as a yes. Okay, dokie. So, if we were to look at our rocket in a little bit more detail here, let's give it a thrust vector control mount. So, let's say that we have a thrust vector. Like this. And we're going to need um, a variable to define. <laughs> Um, to define this guy, um, we will, for the sake, um, what do we want to call it? Yeah, okay, I'm just going to call it. Um, I'll be consistent with other literature. So we're going to call it del, the Greek symbol del. Um, take that as you will. Um, but yeah, we're going to call it the Greek symbol del. So this represents our angle um, of our TVC mount um, in this one axis. And so what we can do, right, is if we have a thrust force, for now we'll assume constant thrust. So we'll just give this some T, and we'll say that's our thrust. Um, this is obviously a vector, right? And with any vector, we can break it up into two components. So we can break it up into a horizontal component and a vertical component. The vertical component is obviously the one we want to maximize, because that's keep the rocket going upwards. The other one is just to make sure that our rocket doesn't do crazy spinny. OK, super dangerous. Um, and obviously, we already know how to break these down. Um, yeah, that's a nice little PID thing. That's beautiful. Um, does someone, for um, extra credit points, want to tell me which or how we find each of these two vectors? A lot of extra credit points on the line here. I was and sign of Dell. You are missing a thrust value in there, but I'll give it to both of you. You both get extra. Oh, time thrust. Yeah. So if we assume that thrust is constant, then we can just write the two. Um, so this we can look at is literally just a triangle, right? We got 
del, and then we're going to break this down into the two components here, right? So opposite over adjacent. So our our sideways forced or our uh, restoring force from the TVC is thrust. And if it's time varying, then we would say it's thrust of t, um, a function of time. But in this case, we'll assume it's constant. So thrust times sine of del. <laughs> The very, very important thing, and the classic stupid idiot mistake Luke and I made, is when we first derived our state space, we were always feeding this value in in angles, not radians, and our sign was meant to take in radians. And so our rocket was always controlling like 50 times more than it ever needed to. And we were like, why is the rocket like reaching the saturation point every time? And that's why our first hold downs of inside have been terrible. So don't make that mistake. Make sure you keep everything in the right, the right kind of units. Otherwise, you'll look really foolish like we do. But we figured it out, and now our control is on point. It is pretty dang clean. Sweet. And then our upward force, obviously. Beautiful. So we now have some of the forces that are acting on our rocket, right? So we have. Um, a force that can represent the upward part here, and we have our restoring force that imparts a torque, imparts a torque on the rocket because it is acting at some distance from our center of mass. And there is one more force. Well, actually, there's one more force. This is that force, and then there's also this. So this guy is broken down into the two. Um, so this guy is also. To write it as a torque, would be this times the distance from our center of mass to the TVC. Um, I can think of a good variable for that, so I'm just going to call it COMC. That's what I usually label it as. So, um, so to make this look a little bit cleaner, the forces that we now have on the rocket, we have this guy, which gives us our side-to-side -side forces. We have this guy, which gives us some of our up and down forces. Um, for now, we're going to ignore drag, because um, it would be a pain to deal with. And it's not particularly relevant to the use of state space. But if you really wanted to, we could work out our dynamics for this. But I don't want to move on. And then, of course, we have our torque, which is this guy. And take a look at this drawing we did. And this drawing, we now have mathematical equations that we can use to describe how our rocket moves through each of these states. Is everyone pretty happy with that? I'm going to sip my coffee for a second so you guys can think about if you have any questions. Hopefully not. Side to side translation, that is this guy. Thrust time sign um, of del. And that gives us this force directly, and that can deal with our side to side translation. It will not spin us because, remember, um, the thing about vectors, right, is that you can put them anywhere. So I could rewrite these vectors. These vectors act here. They act on the center of mass. So that's kind of one of the sort of like slightly counterintuitive things um, is that they act on the center of mass. Um, it's only when we add in a length dimension that we change where they're acting. Um, del, this angle, is our TVC. So we're considering this our control um, output. And then we'll have theta represent the orientation of the rocket. So, and I can, I can write this out very explicitly. So we'll say this is our TVC angle. So this is what we control. 
and then we have theta, which is the rocket angle. Um, we ignore aerodynamics, and why we want to ignore aerodynamics in this case will become very clear in a second um, when we actually sort of get to um, like the the theoretical level of um, state-space control. But, Um, I also I haven't done any preparation, so if I mess up something in the physics, do try and catch me. You guys will need to be on your toes. Um, you'd hope that I wouldn't mess anything up, but you never know. I haven't. This is literally my first time doing this. I haven't really prepared anything before. So, but other than that, seems like we're all good. Um, everyone happy with those physics? These are literally just the, the one. Um, one axis physics of a rocket. Three degree of freedom, right? Degree one, degree two, degree three of freedom. Cool. Okay. So, this is dandy and all, these physics. We could code them into a Python script. You can see I literally have this. Exact same thing in the third degree of freedom stuff in the Python code. We can code that in and we can create a simulation of a TVC rocket. All very dandy, right? But our motivation behind this is being able to derive some form of control, um, some way that we can say, hey, given these states, given some state of the rocket, some position, some orientation of the rocket, we can figure out a del value that means that the rocket returns to some state, our ideal state, our set point. Um, so yeah, um, and I think LHC, yeah, you uh, mentioned, so there's three states and three derivatives. Yeah, so each of these is our force. Each of these is a force or a torque, and with some nice rearranging, we can obviously change these all to be our second derivative um, of our states here, right? This would be force over mass, and our angular acceleration would be over inertia. And this is where we get into sort of the uh, the fun parts of, um, of state space control. So we can now write out these um, with relation to these guys. Um, if we start to rearrange some of our equations, right? Because we've agreed that this equals a torque and the other two equals a force and equals a force. So let's actually go ahead and rewrite these just like this. So based on this equation and how it relates to this equation, we know that if we do there we go. divided by inertia. This then describes alpha, or our angular acceleration. And same with these guys. Um, and just to denote it, um, We'll say this is A sub X to denote that this is our vertical force. Um, this is the force that acts in the upward direction. And boom. Okay. We are now kind of 
in a very happy place so far as starting to derive our state space. So anytime you're sort of um, looking at a control problem that you can do state space for, um, this is kind of like, this is the bread and butter. This is where you want to get to. Um, you want to find out the physics of the system. And this is also why state space isn't as commonly used. Um, you could think about if I just like right now said, oh, guys, I have a control system here on my table. Um, there's an input of voltage and an output of, I don't know, um, something moving. And I don't tell you what the system is. There's no way that you could derive the physics. You wouldn't be able to derive the physics for that system. And you'd probably just result in doing a PID loop. Because the PID loop doesn't involve you needing to understand the physics at all. You could just be like, OK, we'll try these gains and see what happens. And we can tune it like that. So that's one of the, why, one of the reasons why um, PID loops are very common. Um, I ran into this issue um, when I was working on something recently where I wasn't able to derive the dynamics for it, so I ended up having to use a PID. Um, what is M in these equations? Uh, M would be the mass. So these literally just come from F equals MA. Fun fact, you'd be doing the exact same procedure if you're building a tunnel filter. That is very true. It also lives in state space. And once we actually have the state space thing, we can branch off, right, and you can pick um, where you want to go from, from there. So let's now talk about state space. The fundamental equation for state space is x dot equals ax plus bu. Does anyone notice anything very nice? It's linear, LHC, my man. You are on it. That is correct. So it's a nice linear equation, right? I mean, this is as far as math goes. When you when you see an equation in front of you and it looks something like this, man, that's a sigh of relief right there. It's going to be something plus something else, and we're going to get an output. Nothing funky going on here. Um, and then there is also the um, second component of it, which will be y equals cx plus du. Um, <laughs> that picture is amazing. <laughs> that, that, might have to be the, uh, that might have to be the thumbnail of the video. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> hey, here, let me, uh, let me drag it on. And see it on the stream. There we go. <laughs> so Nidos just made this beautiful meme. That's so good. Okay. So yeah, so we have these two equations. Um, this one we don't really care about for now. Um, has to do with observability. Um, and feed forward stuff. Not really what we're interested in doing right now. So yeah, so this guy's nice and linear, and linearity is going to be a very, very big factor um, in controls. If you go into looking at further controls, um, or even just when we look at LQR. I mean, the first letter of LQR is linear, right? So you can maybe deduce from that that it's going to be a pretty important. Thing. Um, the reason that it's so important is that linear systems are very easy to solve, right? We can solve them quickly, um, and we have tons of mathematical tools for being able to predict their behavior. So let's break down what this actually means um, and sort of get a little bit of an intuition um, as to what this means and where, um, or what its motivation is, where it comes from. Where did it go? Where did it come from? Caught my joke. So, um, you maybe have seen in math, maybe not, depends 
depends on what level of math you're at. Um, but this x dot, um, a dot above something literally just means it's derivative. So this literally just means the derivative of x. Um, it would be like me saying dx dt, the derivative of x with respect to time. Um, although in this case, it doesn't necessarily need to be with respect to time. Um, for a lot of systems, it will be, um, but you could have a system where this is not the case. And these two, as you can see, are literally related. Um, x is the integral of x dot, and x dot is the derivative of x. So with that, you can now maybe start to piece together what this actually means in relation to each other. This right here is describing some change in x. Stavada beat me to the punch. Nice. You got it. Yeah, exactly. So all of this stuff, anything that we put in here, is literally just going to be used to tell us how x changes. Um, and we haven't talked about these two. So u is very commonly denoted as our control, um, or our control input to the system. In our case, it's del. If we come back here, right, we know del is our TVC angle. So it's an input to the system. So we have the input to the system. We have x, which is the state of the system. And all it does is shows us how the system changes. And I think, um, I don't know, like once I sort of heard it described like that, um, it sort of all of a sudden starts to make a little bit more sense. It sort of breaks it down. So we have A and B, very common in math, like big capitals like this will denote a matrix. Um, and this is where we start to get into the scarier stuff. But it also denotes constants. Um, define state. Um, state is can be anything. Um, it's what we are observing. It's like what position the system is currently in. Um, so for rockets, um, the state could be our orientation. Um, it could be yeah, our altitude. All of these things. Um, it is like the, yeah, it is the current state. Yeah. So then we have these two, exactly, whatever you want to describe. Um, it's some physical property um, of the system that you will probably have in your physics. And then we have these two constants, right? So it is very simply some constant, some constant times the current state plus some constant times our input to describe the change in the system. I think this is, this is kind of very intuitive, like just from the physics, right? Like you ha if we're starting at some position, we call that X and we give it some input, some del, some change in the angle of our TVC, then we're gonna be able to figure out how the system changes. I think this is very intuitive. It kind of follows naturally. Now, of course, we have to deal with A and B. And this is the, this is the slightly scary part. So this is where we need to describe our system um, through these constants. So we know that these are sort of two variables, but these are the two constants that we need to solve. So A and B define how our system changes based on its current state and the current input. Um, it's also maybe good now for me to say that x and u are very often vectors. Um, and in linear algebra by vector, it is literally a matrix with um, with one. So it's like stuff here, stuff here, like so. And it'll fill up however many states we are observing. Um, U can also be a vector. So in our case, like we have del and maybe we have 
some other stuff. So these are two vectors. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sorry about my handwriting. You gotta you gotta remember I'm doing this with a mouse in Microsoft, so I'm so sorry. But yeah, actually, let's leave this. Out. So yeah, so these are vectors. So it's it's um, a vector is just a matrix with with one, and in our case, it will um, express or define. Um, yeah, I know it's impressive for a mouse. Luke and I do this all the time to brainstorm stuff. So I've gotten pretty good at like being able to draw and like work stuff out with paint. I even do it like for myself like, if I need to like work through a problem and I don't want to pull out a pen and paper. Sometimes you know just whip out paint. It's nice though. You can like erase things really easily. Um, you can like I don't know make the entire thing dark mode if you want. <laughs> um, it's pretty handy. So yeah, so back to our um, our problem here. So x and u are vectors. This is where the magic comes from. This is why we like state space because you can imagine, right? If if this is just one variable, if this is just x, and this is just u. And this is just one number, and this is another number. We don't we don't really get anything out of this. This is this is just the same as PID, and then it's like, why do we do all this work if we don't just have PID control? So the fact that these can be represented as vectors that makes life real sweet. We like that. And so now, of course, we need to put in some legwork. We need to do some heavy lifting. We need to do some math. Um, have you changed? I don't know what that means. Okay. Yeah, okay, so let's come over here, and you'll remember, right, we have our three degrees of freedom. This is what's going to make up our vector, in our case our state vector in it will have theta, x, and z. And our control, you may notice, will only be one. It'll be del and zeros. Now the order of this will change, and when we actually get into going through um, matrices, we'll work through that. Um, but this is just so that you can sort of have some connection between this stuff and uh, the equations over here that these guys will go into each other, uh, and this is what will create our vectors. Um, and actually, that brings me to a, a fun question. Actually, no, I won't ask that question. I think that would be unfair. Okay. You're already lost. Which part are you lost on? Actually, yeah, we can pause it. Like, is everyone happy with that so far? Yeah, um, x and u are vectors. So vector, like I said, it's a matrix with column width 1. So it'll have an integer here. I mean, they don't need to be um, variable, but. OK, I, I mean. There's nothing super crazy um, about vectors. Like, they, it's literally just like it's it's a certain amount of numbers stacked on top of each other. That's kind of all there is to it. Um, it it becomes like the order and stuff becomes important when we start to look into doing matrix multiplication, um, which we're about to do. But for the most part, like, don't worry too much about that. And like, the name vector is very daunting. It's just like. And it was almost literally just like how we write them. 
So we don't need to worry about that too much. Uh, vectors are literally matrices in code. Yeah, um, it's literally it's a matrix with with one. That's it. Yeah, um, or I guess more closely, it would be like an array. Matrix being an array of arrays. Yeah. Anyone else got anything? Everyone else happy so far with uh, the fundamental equation of state space? X dot equals AX plus BU. How do you add X dot X? Um, well, X dot never really gets added to X. Um, or how do you update the state with x dot? Oh, okay, I see. Um, so in that case, right, that's because the reason that this will update x is because it'll be in a control loop. So because it's looping, um, the result, the output of the state, will end up impacting x. Um, and this will be like maybe a little bit more clear when we actually write out our matrices. Um, but like, um, if we were to write this in discrete math, this is maybe a good way of doing it. Um, if you were to write this in discrete math, this would be considered x at time plus one, and this would just be considered x at time Whoops. plus b and u at time. So this is our current time input, and this would describe our next time output, you could say. Right, and then sort of as this loops, well, xt plus 1 becomes xt, and so on and so forth. So this really blew my mind when I saw this, that x at time plus 1 is literally just the derivative of x in discrete math. I'd never done um, discrete maths in school. Um, oh, I mean, I'd done discrete maths in school, but not um, like derivatives and stuff. <laughs> um, so x dot is the state of the next time step. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and that is literally what a derivative is, right? The derivative describes the change, it describes um, what it'll be next, right? Everyone else happy with that? Man, this is exhausting. We've only been at it for like under an hour. I don't know how teachers do it. They get paid. That's true. Yeah, you guys are lucky you're getting this for just the cost of. May I go to the restroom? You can go to the bathroom. You want a break? Do you go a little break? You can go to five minute break or a couple of minutes break. Like two minutes. I don't know. May you? <laughs> yeah, okay. we'll, we'll, uh, we'll break for like a minute or so. Don't pee in the desk. I mean, you can be in the desk if you want, but is it so far so good as well? Is, am I doing a good job? Are you guys liking the explanation? Does it make sense? Is the drawing good? Is it helpful? Good. Okay. I'm glad. It's actually going in one ear and not leaving the other. That's, uh, that's very good. That's my goal. All right, then let's get into some math. Um, we've put it off for so long, and there's only so long that you can put it off. And this is kind of um, probably, I would say, what makes um, at least state space. We haven't even gotten into state space control yet, so we won't worry too much about that. But this is at least, I think, what makes state space. Um, the most difficult is like dealing with um, these derivatives and these matrices. That's what we're about. So, hmm, think about how I want to approach this problem that we're about to run into. Um, I think, yeah, okay. I'm just gonna. Um, explain it to you very directly. So there is a problem with our
state space here. Um, or actually, I don't know if it's a problem. I don't think it is a problem. It's not a problem. But in the case of a TVC rocket, how do we get MV? We're going to get there very soon. Um, in the case of a TVC rocket, um, and maybe some of you will question this when you're thinking about landing, um, but for now, for the simple sake of just controlling the ascent of our TVC rocket, we don't really care at all about controlling the altitude, right? All we want to do is maximize the time we spend going up. We don't actually care about how we deal with the altitude. And we could put this into the control loop, but maybe I'll do that as an exercise that you want to do on your own because it's not simple and it's not really simple. So, with that, as far as we care, we can get rid of this up and down state, right? We can just say that we care about translation and the orientation. Actually, heck, maybe I'll be a little bit controlled and maybe I won't give you guys everything right on the plate. I'm going to say we don't even care about translation. We just care about staying upright and doing it pretty well. So theta, the orientation of the rocket, is the only thing that we care about. We need translation. Well, hopefully after this you'll be able to do that. That's the reason we want state space. Not necessarily. So we can already improve on our PID loop just by caring about orientation. Um, for the sake of keeping this simple, we're just going to deal with the orientation. So the orientation of a rocket, right? There's three states. Theta, its derivative, theta dot, and its second derivative, theta dot dot. You may also, if you um, ever look at like um, like any papers or just common literature on this, you'll also maybe see this guy written as omega and this guy written as alpha. Um, for the sake of sort of it being like very directly transferable, we will use theta dot and theta dot dot. So we'll roll with those for now. Um, yeah, so let's roll with that. So we're just going to care about, so theta dot dot is the acceleration. So we have our angle, we have the rate of change of that angle, and we have the rate of rate of change, change of that angle, <laughs> or the acceleration. Cool. Sweet. Okay, let's go back over here. Dot is directed. Yeah. So, seeing this guy, seeing the state space representation, right? If this represents the change of the system, then we could almost imagine, right, that since our highest derivative, highest derivative that we care about, right? I mean, like, if you really wanted to, you could go to dot, 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 right? And find the rate of change of the acceleration. Like nobody needs that. That's excessive, um, and we don't really care about that. But our highest derivative is this guy, right? So this guy ultimately changes how. So really, in fact, I should have drawn the arrows going like this, right? Because the acceleration changes the um, angular rate, and the angular rate changes our angular position. So they kind of cascade down like this. This being our highest state. So. If we rewrite this fundamental state space equation as theta dot dot equals ax plus b u, does this maybe start to click something in people's minds, maybe a little bit? I like a little. Maybe? Maybe not, right? So with this guy being the change, x dot equals theta dot dot. Yep, in this case, yeah. Remember, x dot just represents the change. x dot is also a vector, by the way. x dot is also a vector, most commonly. In our case, it probably won't end up being a vector, but for the most part, it represents the change 
of the system. So our x vector in this case, right, if all we care about is the orientation of our rocket, then we are left with two states that x dot impacts. We are left with theta and theta dot. Theta dot dot impact both of these. That makes life pretty, pretty neat. Look at this. We got theta and we got theta dot. Our x vector is nice and simple. And then we have our input here, our u, which is del. And in our case, we're just going to write this as a singular del. Um, if you multiply a matrix by a singular value, it's assumed very often, depends on the type of multiplication denotion that you do, but it is assumed that you multiply every value in there by this value. So as opposed to writing it as a vector, we can just write it as a single entity like that. Now, on the page, we have everything we could ever need to solve this equation. We have our states, we have our inputs to the system, right? A is going to describe how, oh, A and B, sorry, will describe how these two things relate directly to this. This is a pretty, pretty, pretty big one. This guy right here. As you may notice, huh? Huh? Yeah. See? This is that's theta dot dot. The equations are going to start to um, be pretty useful here. So, hey, I'm going to zoom it in. There we go. Okay. So let's write it out. Um, what did you say? Um, so AX plus BU is on the flight computer. Is it in the code? Um, we won't worry about any of that for now because that is going to be dealt with when we actually do control. For now, we're just deriving the state space dynamics. Okay. So we'll worry about that stuff um, in probably the part two because this has been a long stream so i mean it's not even that long like an hour but it's a lot of work you know okay how do i want to approach this let's yeah let's say for the sake of simplicity right for now you forgot to re-record desktop audio, are you kidding? You better not have. Alice, you've made a very big mistake. Okay, Nico has the audio. Oh, I just get trolled. You trolling me? I mean, I guess we could slap Nico's audio on the video of it all, but I don't want to audio sync that exactly. Oh, do something to sync the audio. That's true. Okay, watch this. Um, I can draw. I'm gonna draw an X on the screen. Blah. There we go. You can sync it. <laughs> I have hopefully peaked the audio and drew the X on the screen there. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. So, um, we now have sort of like a very classic. Well, not a very classic, but we have a we have a math problem here, right? Like we have some things we know that relate to each other. Um, and like this is probably the part where like we're running out of time on the test and we start to panic and we're like, oh, let's just slap this in there and maybe it works. Who knows? Um, but fortunately, we're not being timed. Uh, 
Um, we're not speedrunning <laughs> state space control. Not yet. <laughs> Might happen someday. But what we want to do, right, is look for ways to simplify this. And you remember me saying earlier, right? I said that this guy is going to be multiplied by everything here. Let's just say, for the sake of simplicity, that if I said del is zero, oh, this guy's going to go to zero. And this guy is still going to have to be true, right? If del is zero, then this equation still has to hold true with inequality. So this guy still has to be true. So theta dot dot still has to be represented by ax when del is zero. And this is something that could exactly happen, right? If we had a system without disturbances, then we wouldn't need to have a TVC moment at all. We'd hold that at zero. We'd be chilling. So this must represent each other. Can we get Luke to teach in part two? You could. Luke should have taught this part, to be honest. Luke is, Luke is better at this stuff than I am. Um, he actually taught me um, the state space stuff initially. Um, he was the first one to like actually go through all of it and figure it out. Um, Okay, so yeah, so right, so like any math problem, right, we're gonna try and look for some simplifications. I think this is a pretty good simplification we want to do. So now we have eight and we know that x is represented by theta and theta dot. Now, this is the scary part. A is technically going to be a Jacobi. Jacobian matrix, and what a Jacobian matrix is is essentially it's the partial derivatives of our state vector um, with relation to our output vector um, or in this case output value but output vector um, in most cases and i can we can pull up the wikipedia um for a you can see I'm how to do a jacobian calculator not too long ago you pause for a second. Let's switch your audio device. Sure. And it may. Let me know when you're ready to continue. All good? Cool. So, yeah, so this is a Jacobian. Um, looks very scary, right? If you've not done um, like linear algebra and derivatives and stuff like this. Um, or multivariable calculus, the hen looks very scary. But in essence, very simple, um, at least in our case. So all it is is a matrix of partial derivatives um, where it relates the output to the state. But fortunately, there's a nice and easy way to do this that isn't too scary at all. is that we can say um, do I want to, I don't know if I want to introduce new variables. Maybe we'll keep it like this. Let's maybe try keeping it like this for now. Let me think about that for a second. Do I want to keep it like this? I think we do. I think we do. Um, sorry, I'm just thinking about what will keep our life the simplest here when we go into converting into the matrices. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I think we'll be okay. Okay, so let's rock with this. Will part two be tomorrow? Probably not, but it will be so. How long is this going to last? We're almost done. Um, like probably like 10 15 minutes, and we will be finished with the state space derivation, and then we will call that for today. You gotta go in 20. All right, the speed run is on now. Okay, so let's speed run, we'll, we'll get through this. So, um, I did mention that this is. 
equal to theta dot dot. So let's rewrite that. If we have theta dot dot equals our thrust times the sine del times the center of mass to the TVC divided by our inertia. Um, now this in and of itself is um, pretty much a very good place for us to start, right? Because we have our control input that's getting plugged in here, and we're getting an output. And if we, like in our case, said that the control input is zero, then all of this goes to zero, and the physics become quite dandy. Now remember, the Jacobian describes the rate of change um, for each of our variables in our state space relating to our output. So keeping that in mind, the way that we can rewrite this now is not with x, we want to use theta. The derivative of theta, theta dot, is going to have, and this is going to look a little bit abstract for now, but um, but bear with me, because once we have worked all the way through it, it will hopefully be a little bit more. So I'm doing this to try and help us avoid having to actually calculate the um, traditional way. So this is going to have zero relation. Hold up. Let me think about that for a second. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%, yeah, 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 okay, cool. This is going to have zero relation to theta, right? Because theta won't equal theta dot. Not, not really possible, unless we were to take derivatives, right? However, the second va variable in our state vector here obviously will. Right? That, I mean, that should be very simple. All I've written is theta dot equals theta dot. Nothing here is groundbreaking. <laughs> Great, exactly. Now, let's come to our another, our second second derivative here, theta dot dot. Does it have any relation to theta? The answer is no. Does it have any relation to theta dot? No. Right? Will we have mic questions for Discord members? We need to plug the Discord. We will. That'll be at the very end. At the very end, I'll unmute you guys and. Um, where are the ones and zeros coming from? Um, they're literally coming from making these equations hold true. So I have to have a one in here because I'm saying theta dot equals theta dot, right? But if I introduce a non-zero value here, then we have theta plus theta dot equals theta dot. This is very obviously not true, right? Same for our theta dot dot case. Cool, yeah, exactly. So none of these depend on that. Now, the nice thing about matrices and systems of equations is that systems of equations, A and B are zero and one for now. Um, B, we are totally ignoring for now. We are saying that we have given zero control input. And if we give zero in con control input, then this still has to hold true. Theta dot dot, or the Really, I should probably leave this as x dot. Maybe that's good. we should probably leave this as x dot. But we still have to be able to describe change of the system given just a and x, because b could be zero. You could have a system, and without any input, the system would be open loop. And the open loop dynamics of a rocket still work. For those of you who have had a TVC rocket fail because maybe you didn't turn your flight computer on or anything crazy like that, 
then you know that the open loop dynamics have to work. Physics don't break if you don't uh, not plug in um, your flight computer. <laughs> exactly. So we kind of we intuitively know that this has to be true. And this is this is what might blow your minds here, right? We have now found our A matrix. See you, man. Have a good one. Thank you for stopping by. Like I said, it'll be recorded. Um, and at the end, we will do um, some Q and A, um, but that won't be recorded. Um, but there'll be another. There'll be a part two. Maybe. Plug the Discord. I'll plug the Discord at the end. Um, but I mean, for anyone watching on YouTube, um, the people asking questions are on the Discord, and you should totally join the Discord if you want early access and questions. Be able to ask questions on tons of fun topics, just like this. So. Yeah, $25 for carbon. It is a bargain. What a steal. The amount of stuff you get. Hooey. So much very fun. Exactly. Um, yeah, so as I was saying, right, we kind of done did it. This is our A matrix. This is our Jacobian. This describes how our state... ...relates to our change in our states. Um, and and so now if I take this system of equations that we have right here, and I rewrite it, I have a matrix with 0, 1, 0, and 0, and this gets multiplied by the two states that we care about, and this equals the change in our states. Now, for those of you who can do very simple matrix multiplication off the top of your head, this is maybe pretty easy, right? Pretty obvious, right? You multiply the first ones, bam, bam. You multiply the second ones, bam, bam. And literally all this tells us, this entire matrix, all that it's going to tell us is that theta dot equals theta dot, right? We got zeros everywhere, so theta times zero. That doesn't, theta can't have any impact in the change of the system because it is our lowest derivative state. So that makes sense, right? There's no way that theta could impact the rate of change of the system. Theta dot, however, can directly impact this change of generation, or this change in the state, but it cannot impart an acceleration. It cannot um, impart a torque on the vehicle because it is simply a angular accelerate, or an angular rate, sorry, not an angular. And now, this is where we introduce our B matrix. Because we do still have a state that is unaccounted for. Um, or a state that we aren't controlling, right? But we have our A matrix, we have our X. All we now need is our... Shout out Nico's Insta. Oh, of course. Everyone, um, go follow, is it Nico3Rockets? Nico3 underscore Rockets on Instagram. Um, what a homie. Who has to go soon? So we'll try and finish this up room. All right. So you can see, like, we've already pieced a lot of this together, right? Our A matrix has been solved. So x dot is just theta. Uh, x dot is theta dot and theta dot dot. So x dot, theta dot, and theta dot dot. Because x dot represents the chain, um, the state chain, right? Cool. So now the last one that we have is b. And if we rewrite it, sort of like how we had it up here, um, and we'll just go over here and do that. So theta dot and theta dot dot go to 2. And we have b plus u, or sorry, no, b times u, and b times u here. So we know from our physical dynamics that we derived here that our input, why is x now a dot? x is not a dot. Well, I mean, it's a dot in some place. Is dot multiple? Oh, sorry. That's times. I use dot and x. Um, you 
should probably use a dot for matrix multiplication. It's whatever. Okay, so we have, we literally already have um, an equation here that represents how some input relates to our output. This makes life very simple. So if I do this, ah, boom. Um, how do you put these equations in the code? We aren't worrying about that just yet. This is all um, just laying the foundation for state-space dynamics. Um, and we'll, we'll cover that when we actually get into closing the control loop. But for now, we're just worrying about the dynamics. We open source code for um, You already have access to some pretty useful code. For LQR. LQR code is simple. We'll talk about it in the control stuff. Um, it's pretty simple. And maybe we'll even introduce it in the simulation. But so for now, right, let's think about what can so thinking about Dell, right, with relation to Dell, our TVC control input, which of these states can we directly impact? We already know the answer. We have an equation. I already I fed you the answer already, right? So we already know that it's going to be zero because we don't, Dell can't directly impact this state, but it can directly impact this state. And the way that it does that is by a thrust times a, using that, times that, times a sine of Dell, times a COM QTVC over the inertia of the system. Now, yeah, the control Python library we might use um, when we do introduce it into the simulation. Um, it's pretty handy, except um, it won't compile for Python 3 for me for some reason. So I'll need to figure that out before we do the next stream. Um, OK, so there is now a fundamental issue that we run into. Because if I were to write this in matrix form, well, I guess it'll actually just be a vector, but matrix. Okay, we have zero here, and then we have our second part, E times sine of this times T O M to T B C over I. And then we have a multiplication of our del input. And this is fine, right? So del gets multiplied by zero. That's totally fine because we know that del, our TVC control input, cannot directly manipulate our theta dot. It can only manipulate it by changing our angular acceleration. We impart a torque on the vehicle by changing our TVC angle. And this then impacts other states. But we cannot directly impact other states, if that kind of makes sense. The key issue, though, is this guy, right? Because when I start to do multiplication here, how I can't, multiplication doesn't allow me to insert del into my sign. It doesn't allow me to insert it into a function. So this is where we are bound to linearity. The system needs to be described linearly. And so to do that, we use our small angle approximation. So we assume that del is equal to sine of del. And I know Stavato is freaking out in chat because I'm doing it. But guess what? I'm an engineer, not a mathematician. And actually, let me just see if I can convince you of this very quickly. Let me convince you that if we are looking, whoa, I don't want that. Oh, I just assume. Yes. If we are looking at very small angles, look how close these two are, right? X or del and sine of del. Look at, they're so similar. So, what we're going to do is we're going to assume 
but because our TVC can only actuate so much. If I actually, is there, can I convert to degrees? Yeah. Oh, no, but then this will be high yeah, speed. I hate can scroll with this one. Okay. Our TVC can only actuate so much, right? It's not going to be actuating like more than 50 degrees ever. I don't know. I mean, like 10 degrees toss, right? That puts us very happily in this range we're thinking here. So we can very easily say that this is a safe assumption. This now simplifies everything. We don't need to do weird multiplication to insert it into a sign. All we need to do is thrust times the center of mass, the TVC, over our inertia. Um, you could not approximate it as a polynomial because, again, you'll run into the same issue of you'd need to insert it into that polynomial. Um, you could find a coefficient, right? But it has to remain linear. Uh, a polynomial is just a, an equation with many terms, hence polynomial. Um, it would be like y equals x squared plus x, or you know, however many, um, however many n degrees of the polynomial you want. I mean, I guess, I guess technically, y equals mx would be a polynomial, um, so first order. So, I guess technically you could put it into a polynomial, but it has to be linear, right? We're bounded by matrix laws to keep this as linear. So del has to be multiplied into these, like so. And this then gives us our B matrix. Why can't you multiply by del in the top example? Um, so the reason is this guy, right? This isn't being multiplied by del. This is sine applied to del. And when we do our matrix multiplication here, what happens is del gets multiplied by zero. And that's fine, right? Because del doesn't directly impact theta dot. But it does indirectly impact theta dot dot. But the issue is that the del needs to be moved out here. And there's no way that we can easily move it out there. Can't we just solve the bottom equation? The issue is, is that we aren't solving it. We are stating it to be true. We are saying that this has to hold a true. So there isn't any solving that we do here. We are simply using equations to describe how the system behaves. So there's never really a situation where we can solve this guy. And I mean, like, surely this graph convinces you well enough that, like, it isn't really an issue. Like, unless we're actuating our TVC, like, ridiculous amounts. I mean, like, what? That's like pi over 2. That's like 90 degrees. And only at 90 degrees do we start to see, like, I don't know, more than, like, a 40% uh, diversion of the error. So, like, this is a very good approximation. We don't need to do anything crazy. We're very happy with this. Um, can we solve the bottom? No, 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 no. So that. Yeah. So now, with all of this, you refuse to believe this is true. I have. I mean, I've shown you that it is true. You don't need to believe me for anything. I can show you that it's. You can find for yourself. This is very true. This is a, this is a very very good approximation for a very wide range of TVC angles. So. We now, after all of this, have drum roll, please. Extreme hype in the chat as we finish writing our fundamental state space equation. A big S moment. Big S's, yes. Big hype, big S in the chat because after all this we have written a system of linear equations that allow us to describe our tvc this is it right here Whew. That was exhausting. Look how much we wrote. Look at all this. This is a, a certified Mater moment. 
a Mater Matrix moment, in fact, you could actually say. <laughs> this would be a perfect Mater Matrix moment. I will save the file, and I'll upload it to the Discord. Another reason why you should join the Discord, am I right? So yeah, um, are you guys happy with that being the conclusion? This is, we have a state space equation. Um, at least with, I know you want more, but um, this is at least the conclusion for how to derive some state space dynamics. Is everyone happy with that? Happy with everything but the small angle approximation? Well, Stavato, if you want to figure out how to derive the dynamics without the small angle approximation, you're more than welcome to. Um, but yeah, so we will now, I'll now unmute you guys and we can do questions. Watch this. Um, I'm going to take a break for like one second. Um, and then, yeah, thanks, Nico. Thank you for recording it. I will ask you if any of the recording uh, Atlas didn't do it. But yeah, we'll now open up the questions. Um, we're going to stop recording. So if you're on YouTube, I'm so sorry. Make sure you join the Discord. And that's how you can ask questions live. Um, and we'll talk about this in more depth. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope I did a decent enough job explaining it. Make sure you like and subscribe and all that.